Hi everyone. In our previous video, we discussed that how to create virtual LAN using a single switch. And today we are going to discuss that how to create virtual LAN using multiple switches using trunking. So to illustrate the idea, I have shown two switches, switch one, switch two. And on switch one, you can see one computer is a member of VLAN 10 and second computer is a member of VLAN 20. And on this switch, switch number two, one computer is member of VLAN 20 and second computer is VLAN, a member of VLAN 10. It means on, a, on this switch, we have two LAN, VLANs. On this switch as well, we have two VLANs. But VLAN 10 is the member of this switch as well as this switch. Now, if this user of VLAN 10 wants to send something to its other members, then this data or this frame has to travel from this switch to this switch. So today we have to discuss that how this data travels. So the question is how to forward traffic between those two switches or multiple switches. And the solution is trunk or VLAN trunking. With the help of this VLAN trunking, we can, we can transmit the frames from one switch to another switch. So what happens with VLAN trunking, switch follows a process that is known as VLAN tagging. And by tagging, the sending switch adds extra header to the ethernet frame. And that in that extra header, we have this VLAN ID. So for instance, if this switch is going to generate a frame, to be sent to this switch and they are using VLAN, then this tagging will add an extra header like this and that is known as trunking header. Once that header has been added, this frame will travel to the next switch. And in the same way, so this header is maybe from VLAN 20, if we have a frame from VLAN 10, then same process, a VLAN header will be added, a trunking header will be added and that frame will be sent to the next switch. And the same way this can go on that side as well. So this is how when the data travels from one switch to another switch by using this tagging process. Now let's see how to configure that. So we saw that tagging is done by establishing a, a trunk link between switches so this is a trunk link and this trunk is comes from the old concept of telephone system that multiple users can share and can call at the same time using the trunk line so here it means that using this trunk line both of the users whether they are from VLAN 10 or 20 they can send their traffic using the same trunk link so tagging establish a trunk link so this is the trunk link between switches using trunk ports so they use ports okay but now they say we say that trunk port it means we have to configure these ports to act as a trunk port for us now to configure these ports to act as a trunk port we have commands that is first we need to go to that particular interface type number. So first we go to, for example, this interface using this command. And then we say switch port mode trunk. So with this command, now this port will act as a trunk port. And when we connect these switches using these ports, we will establish a trunk link between those switches, which we actually want. Yeah, very simple command. And these uh, trunk ports actually uses trunking protocols. And for these trunking protocols, we can have IEEE 802.1Q or uh, ISL, that is inter-switch link. So ISL is a Cisco proprietary protocol, but this is no more uh, that much popular. But the, the IEEE 802.1Q is the popular trunking protocol which we use among the switches when they are um, dealing with the VLAN. So in 
So we are going to discuss that uh, 802.1Q trunking protocol. So this trunking protocol supports VLAN on Ethernet networks. How does it support? It actually adds an extra four byte header. So only the principle is that when this switch generates a frame, that frame has to be sent to this one. Then as a part of this trunking protocol, it is going to add an extra header and that header has is four bytes in length. Okay. Now let's see what is in this header part, which is being added by this protocol. So for example, this is the frame which we want to study and this is the uh, frame which, which is generated after addition of this extra header. You see, these all fields, destination, source address, type field, data and FCS, they come from normal Ethernet frame. And now this protocol, actually this protocol is going to add this field that is known as tag field. In that tag field, this protocol adds, has different fields, further fields. So in, within tag, we have the type, priority, as well as flag fields. And at the moment, we are interested in this VLAN ID, and that is 12 bits in length. So if VLAN ID is 12 bits in length, it means we can have 4096 different number. So we can have these many VLAN ID numbers possible. And if we and calculate the range and then this goes from 0 to uh, 495 but we divide them into two uh, parts from this 1 to 1005 this is known as normal range and this is known as extended range normally we use normal range and with some uh, configuration we can use this extended range as well uh, but we use normal range and for this uh, we need some configurations okay and the very first and the very last numbers are reserves. We don't use them as a VLAN IDs. And then the same protocol, the trunking protocol, 802.1Q, defines one special virtual LAN as well that is known as native VLAN. Okay, so we can create many VLANs, but one special VLAN, VLAN is also defined by this, and that is known as native VLANs. And frames traveling in the native VLANs do not have these uh, VLAN IDs. So they don't use VLAN, VLAN IDs if they are traveling within the native VLANs. So there are different benefits or many benefits. A drawback we will discuss in the next video, but native VLANs are there and they are by definition part of the switch. Anyway, this was some theory about this uh, uh, creating virtual uh, LAN between different switches. The command to be used is so simple, but big theory uh, is important. So I just presented this, uh, um, uh, the basic concepts about virtual LAN between multiple switches. So uh, we can do the same thing in packet tracer as well, using the simple command. So let's do that in packet tracer. Thank you.